Well, we've got another train show to show. Yes. Actually, two. Oh. Well, we saw two different train shows, and and uh, they're both just kind of good train shows and and wonderful and, and stuff. But when I started editing the footage together, it was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> but by, so what I did is I combined them, and now it's one really big, interesting train show. Yeah. The one train show is the Thanksgiving Point train oh, show. Oh, that was fun. And that's a fun one. It isn't a terribly big one, but no. everybody looks forward to it every year. And it comes in the middle of winter when people are just kind of desperate for a thing to do anyway. And, yes. and that's really fun. And then the other one is the big train show, the NMRA uh, Wasatch. And they've changed the name now to the Inner Mountain something. Anyway, it's the NMRA train show ah. that they do every <laughs> single year now at the Southtown Expo. Yes. Anyway, so check this out. Two train shows for yes. the price of one. So we're starting at the Inner Mountain Train Expo. I love this one. This is a really good show. It attracts a lot of kids. It sure does. And they do all these hands-on uh, experiences for kids to come and actually run and ride. So it attracts way more kids than most of the shows do. Running trains, by golly. Same thing. Flat out. You know, they've been doing this show for so long, the first time I came to it, I was a kid, too. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's been around forever. It's put on by the local chapter or division or whatever of the NMRA, the National Model Railroad Association. As always, I think our favorites are the dealers. Exactly. And uh, same same people who come to all the shows, but there's always something fun and exciting to find. The tool man. Exactly. I don't think we've ever gone to a show and not bought a tool. At least one or two. And this is uh, the Rotens. They have uh, Hartford products and Ozark products. They're from Cedar City. So many. Of these and so they pop up cars. to Salt Lake with all of their really neat stuff. And, of course, we always have to buy something from them, too. <laughs> it's all laser-cut wood and white metal castings and so on, but it's really, really good stuff. We went down to visit them and see how these things are made. That was fun. It we did was. a whole show on that. We did. <laughs> We've been down there a couple of times, and I'll bet we find our way back, too. This is their skeleton log car, and this is the one I want to run on our logging railroad. Oh, neat. Isn't that cool? That's gorgeous. Such beautiful detail. And, of course, the Lego guys are here. That's right. <laughs> uh, they, they come to all these different train shows, but I'm just blown away at all the neat stuff that they can build out of Legos. No kidding, look at all of this. Some of them are kits that you can just buy from Lego, but then a lot of these are things that these guys have figured out for themselves, and they just cobble them together out of the available parts and bricks and components and so on. What's amazing, they have Lego train sets. Yeah, I didn't know they, they did that, but I, I guess either. they've been doing that for a long time. and. A lot of these guys have Lego trains. That's awesome. I guess that's why they come to the train shows. But everywhere you look, then there's some train going by. And then all this other Lego stuff. Just absolutely amazing. <laughs> At this show, they had a whole lot of Star Wars stuff going on. I don't know why. <laughs> Somebody, part of this club, is just a Star Wars fanatic. That's right. I guess. And Back to the Future. There we go. I love Back to the Future, and there's the whole square, and there's the time machine, DeLorean, and everything, all put together out of Lego bricks. Our sister-in-law, Myra, and her son, they collect Legos, too, and they have fun. They sure do. Oh, look at this. Oh, what? Karen Gerald has figured out how to do in-scale pine trees using, like, furnace filters. We've got to try this. That looks so good. She just gets his stuff at Lowe's and then kind of fluffs it up and trims it and sticks it on a shaft and paints it green and adds a little woodland scenic. Look at that. It looks real. Those are great and really easy to do. And she can just knock out hundreds of these for their N-Scale Railroad all in an evening. And here's Jim Wanless with his N and NN3 layout. These are cardstock buildings just printed off on a computer. 
And here's his new Shea in NN3. He's using Z scale track, Z gauge track, I guess you'd say, and Z mechanisms. But he's dual gauging this stuff and he's building his own track components for the NN3. And it just looks and runs so great. It's really neat to work in something this small and that it just looks perfect. And it doesn't take up that much room. No. I know you love in scale. I do. <laughs> I have a funny feeling one of these days you're going to build a layout. Exactly. And this is the other train show. This is the Trackers train show that they do every year at Thanksgiving Point. Right. So this is the layout of Bob and Karen Gerald again, the, the people who are making the pine trees out of furnace filters. But this is their modular railroad that they take around to the shows. That's nice. It's a beautiful layout. This is a fairly small train show, but it's a good one. It is. There's a lot of dealers and a lot of things to see in a very compact amount of space. Now this was really amazing. This guy's showing all the different scales that are available and you see that around, but He's taken it all the way down to a scale called Nano. Yes, and I want it. <laughs> Nano, one thousandth <laughs> scale. Yes. I mean, he goes down to N, okay, then Z, wow, that's small, then T. That's mine. And then Nano. Nano's One <laughs> thousandth scale. Nano, Nano. Nano, Nano. <laughs> it actually works with the exact same system as the Maglev trains. The train is pulled along a magnetic track. And here they have a switching layout for kids. Yes. And as always, it's the girls. The over girls there are playing with the switching they, layout. They love it. They're, it's way more popular with girls than it is boys these days. And I'm really glad to see that. It's always good to see kids playing with trains. I believe that's the future of the hobby. Well, we have to have it or there won't be a hobby that's after right. a while. And it's just really neat to see kids playing with trains. <laughs> Toy trains and model trains, all kinds of different things for all kinds of different people. Wow, look at these Rio Grande E units. Those are nice. Wow. I love Rio Grande, I love Union Pacific, and I love E-Units. <laughs> that kind of brings everything together in one place right there. And the Lego guys are back. <laughs> same group, different train show, same basic layout. Look at that bridge they've built. I love it. I have no idea how they're able to hold that whole thing up, but it works. It's a structural bridge. It crosses that huge, huge span. It's sure popular to have amusement park rides on a layout. Yeah, Myra just built a roller coaster. She did. Yeah, and it works great. But that's just, a, it's a popular thing right now. Lego amusement park rides. And here's the Rio Grande Historical Society. They had some displays set up over here. Really fun to see. And this shirt dealer. <laughs> I'm thinking we should buy us a couple of t-shirts while I we're here. I think we should. I saw some with Big Boy. Yes. And we can wear those when the Big Boy comes. That's right. So that'll be really cool. Let's grab us a couple of t-shirts. In fact, we can shop a whole bunch of dealers. We'll find something fun. <laughs> like this one here. Ooh, end scale. That's so neat. But they do get a lot of dealers here, and every train show attracts a certain group of dealers that you won't see anywhere else, so it's treasure hunting. Exactly. You're going to see stuff that you have never seen before, and you're never going to see again, so if you see something you want, then you darn well better buy it. This guy had all these little Civil War figures and cannons and stuff, like wargaming stuff, but that's really cool. Never seen that before. And this is all, generally speaking, modern motive power. The modern stuff works so well, and it's all digital and digitally controlled and sounds. Oh, look! Uh, it's, it's Al's Pine Tree video. Wow. Oh, that is so neat. I'm glad to see that his videos are still around. Al was the god of pine trees. No kidding. <laughs> Ooh, speaking of big boys. There's one there. Oh, look at the size of that That's thing. That's huge. 
And tin plate. I love the old oh, tin plate. Oh, this is one of my favorites. I love collecting this stuff. Don't don't have a railroad and don't have an interest in a railroad, but I love just collecting this old stuff. And dinnerware off dining cars. I would love to have a set of that. Oh boy, I'll tell you what. I love the old dinnerware, but when you can find one of your favorite railroads like the Rio Grande here, it's like, oh, that's that's tempting. That'd be really fun to have a full set of that. This O-scale three rail stuff is so popular right now. It sure is. A lot of people are getting into that. And so many really neat offerings. Look at this, a turbine. Oh, neat. A three unit turbine in three rail O-scale. <laughs> but just all kinds of fun things for the toy train collector. And here we have Fleischmann German trains. Oh, wow. These are so well made and so amazing. Is that German? Typically, of course, German prototypes. And so you don't run into it very often. But this guy, he was from Germany. And, well, he had his whole collection here and he was selling it because he's getting out of uh, German trains and switching over to American narrow gauge. <laughs> and. Here's some American oh, narrow gauge, ON30. Oh, wow. That's the big rage right now, ON30. And this stuff is just gorgeous. And of course, brass locomotives. I'm always tempted to pick up everything in brass. I just love collecting brass locomotives and they had a great selection here. And this is just sort of a fun thing from the mid-century. 1960s plastic vill plastic uh, structure kit. Those are neat. I love the packaging. The kits are, are basically junk, but I love it. I want them all. This dealer had all kinds of really neat mid-century kits, which is cool for us because we're kind of mid-century people. That's right. <laughs> Born in the mid-century and kind of still stuck there. That's right. <laughs> Uh-oh. You should get one of these. We need that for Garage Mahal. We do. I think this Score. Is one that we've seen around, but I haven't seen them that cheap before. I know right where that can go. Where's that? Right in front of the curio cabinet and the jukebox. Ooh. Now this really blows my mind. This is my new favorite thing, small shelf layouts. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Easy to get to, easy to work on, tons and tons of fun to run. I mean, who's to say trains have to go around in circles? You could interact with this better too. Yeah, it's a lot more hands-on involvement. Instead of just sitting back and watching the train go around, you're actually running the train. And I think that's much more entertaining. <laughs> now what this guy's actually selling here are all these electronics that run his signaling system. So you could put that on a larger railroad, a smaller railroad, but all of those electronics are running all of these flashing lights and signals, changing up the, the signals from red to green, and all of that sort of thing to indicate if the train has a clear track in front of it and all of that sort of thing. But the exciting thing, I think, is the amount of fun he's having just going back and forth and running his trains and having all this uh, signaling and sound and all of this interaction working for him. It appears that everything is really easy to get to with this kind of a setup. No climbing or anything like that. Yeah, and as an older person, that's a, a big plus. Right. And here we have the Garden Railroad Society. <laughs> they don't have a Garden Railroad here because they can't very well transport a, a railroad from the backyard, complete with trees and rocks and everything. So they have a portable railroad that they can bring to shows. And it gives them a chance to show off their really neat equipment that they would normally be running out in their backyard. It seems that the kids love the big trains more than the small trains. Yes. I must be a kid. because That's I, <laughs> right. I love the big trains too. I just absolutely love a gigantic 
backyard railroad like this. It's just really fun. Now this is a really fun thing we've been looking at. It's N-scale tabletop modules. Oh, neat. Isn't that cool? I love that. So it's a regular N-scale modular railroad, but there's no legs or anything. It's all designed to just sit on the top of folding tables. And this is a new thing that a lot of the N-scale people are doing because a lot of what you transport to the shows are the support mechanisms for your modules well, in this case, the modules are just made out of uh, foam, out of oh, insulation neat. foam, and they just sit on top of a table. And that makes life so much simpler. This is really a thing that's taking off. And here we have the NMRA group from the other train show that we looked at, because this year they're going to be hosting the National Train Show, and that's coming up in just a few months. That is. Ooh. Looking forward to that. Well, this has all been very, very, very exciting. It has been. And very fun. Always fun to go to a train show. Well, it's neat. Two different train shows. Yes. And just just fun. Mm -hmm. Just fun. We go to those train shows every year. Oh, they're just fun. I like to look around and see what they have for sale, tools and stuff. That's my favorite thing. I mean, I love to see the, you know, the modular railroads and all mm -hmm. of that sort of thing. And it's fun to watch those. Right. But what's really fun just as a participant in these things is to go see what you can find for sale. Yes. And it's treasure hunting, so oh, it's yeah. sort of like eBay without a computer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. just that's just fun. Yeah. And that's I, I guess that's what we enjoy most yeah. about the train Same shows. Is just odd man things they have. Going around to the vendors and, and we always we always end up buying at least one tool oh, easy. from the tool vendor. Yes. <laughs> Or one of the tool vendors, because there's a couple of those. Anyway, it's just fun. <laughs> Train shows are just fun. So yeah. if there's one in your neighborhood, uh, attend. Yes. And if you live in the Salt Lake area, there's two of them right mm -hmm. there. You can attend both or either one, whichever way you want to go exactly. with that. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. First of all, it makes you cool. Yeah, that's right. And then you get to wear sunglasses and stuff, even at <laughs> night, because that's the cool thing to do. But it also, uh, much more importantly, means that you can get notified whenever we upload. When, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but lately we've been uploading some random Friday stuff in yes. our new series called Look What We Found. Because <laughs> we keep finding stuff. <laughs> well, we're out shooting and we come across something that doesn't really fit the show. And it's like, look what we found. So we yeah. said, let's just do that. Let's just <laughs> post that stuff and say, look what we found. Yes. So those are popping up on Fridays. Well, you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss any of this fun. <laughs> so the subscribe button. And the easy way to get to the channel and be a subscriber, zoom, click on the blue button right there. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet, and we hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday with the Tuesday Show. And on Friday with yes. Look What We Found. Yes. Bye-bye.